you're not seeing the winning time on HBO, yeah, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of spoilers. But it's only because episode two dropped, so we can get to episode one, an episode review. Mark, okay. Well, what did you think about the first episode of the winning time? No, oh, I want to talk about the second episode. <laughs> you want to? Uh, I, no, I haven't no, seen no, it yet, so that's why. I've, I've, I've seen it. Why don't you step outside, Zach? We'll, we'll handle it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the tables have turned. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, no, we'll talk about the first episode. I love how they establish everything, obviously. I never knew how much of a D bag uh, Norm Nixon was to uh, Magic Johnson. Was that true? Because there were certain things that happened during the episode. I was like, was that true? I know it's based on true events, but was that true? I, I think, Mike, do you know anything about Well, I, I think that we're going to stay, you know, stay tuned because apparently Norm Nixon and Max Johnson eventually became like really close running buddies and both had kind of access to Lakers shower room where some stuff happened. Oh, Donald Sterling. Oh. No, uh, Donald Sterling also Which, makes an appearance in the first episode. Yeah, which makes they make him look really creepy, and it makes a lot of sense. But uh, I, I, I was like, "Whoa!" Like I, I don't know. Like I'm assuming that's how he was back in the day. Mm -hmm. I gotta say though, John C. Riley as Jerry Buss, can he just walk around like that for the rest of his life? <laughs> yeah, no, that was perfect. Like I understand why um, the head guy from that made this whole show, Adam McKay. Adam McKay. I understand why he made the decision to go with. Riley over Will Ferrell, and it might yeah, have cost a friendship, but it's well worth it. There's no way Will Ferrell could look just. I mean, maybe, maybe with hair and makeup, but dude, John C. Riley like is almost like it, it's. I look at old pictures of like Jerry Buss, like whoa, like they they almost got it, like to almost to a T. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and I love and, his personality. And it's funny. It's so hilarious. The thing that took me by surprise, and maybe it's because I don't like read enough books about it like I, I thought i read some books but i guess not where it comes to john uh jerry west excuse me when it comes to jerry west's attitude apparently the show has portrayed him as the biggest a-hole and oh! after watching him from this episode all of the articles between the lakers and jerry west yes. and everything that's gone down that totally makes sense so i, okay. I see where it's so, going hey, ever since i saw that first episode i always wanted to talk about it on the air because of that yeah, because of how much we talked about Jerry West before, about maybe he's just a, you know, an a-hole. It all makes sense why he's depressed and has anxiety and, and and you know complains about the Lakers took away my season tickets. It all makes sense now, and the fact that he kind of did that to himself, kind of he just exposed himself. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, season two. I know Matt Zach haven't seen it, but no spoilers here. I mean, episode it, two. Episode two. Excuse me. It, that they kind of explain why Jerry West is is yeah. the way he is right. in episode two, which I think kind of you know. Gives him like somewhat of a pass. And just going back from uh, when we did an episode back on February 1st, uh, we had a highlight video on our YouTube page. So if you want to go check it out, check it out. The title is Jerry West is still being petty about the Lakers. And it has to do with Jerry West getting his tickets canceled by the Lakers or so he says, right? Um, and mind you, like a lot of it is because he's now working with the rival, the Clippers. So it's not like he can't get tickets uh, into his own arena through the other team, right? Like why would he want to go to the Lakers during a Charlotte Hornets game, or why would he want to go to the Lakers when it's uh, against Oklahoma City Thunder, right? Like, Here's, also you're a multimillionaire. Yeah. Pay your own way. Pay your own way. Well, but that too. He's okay. So he's making it seem like, oh, the Lakers is, dude. You work with the rivals now. You work with the team that a lot of Laker fans had to get defensive about because you hear their fans, your fan base, saying, "We run LA. We run LA." Tyrone Lue said it best. They have 17 championships. We do not. So thank you, Ty Lu, for living in reality. But back to the point. Uh, there are comments on the YouTube page that go, Jerry West is responsible for at least half of the Lakers championships. If this is how you're going to treat a Laker legend, then no one will ever be respected. Title should have read, Lakers are being about petty about Jerry West. So Alex M., this is to you. Uh, and then Scott Tracy, excuse me, who is being petty? Give me a break. What an asinine thought. Ellie had every chance to hire West before Memphis. Uh, guess what? They did have him before Memphis. So you too. Um, before Memphis, Golden State and the Clippers, they did nothing. So wait, hold up. Jerry West gets credit for bringing Shaq to LA. He also brought Phil Jackson. It wasn't the Lakers' fault that Jerry West and Phil Jackson didn't work out. So Scott Tracy, you can go this too. Please, I hope these people see our YouTube videos again because this is so asinine that people are coming up to bat for an actual a-hole. Well, here's the funnier part. It's the internet. So, like, usually people are wrong and they're dumb and they have nothing better to do. They complain on the internet. And then, you know, we respond to them. But 
Cause, you know, only because it's funny. And also, but, this with, is engagement, so I'm really hoping they come back so that way we could get our numbers up. This is from <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Content. We need it. We, yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, bad press is good press. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Controversy <laughs> creates cash. Yeah, as we learned for that, say hello to the bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know why we're here. Mm -hmm. I mean, but but it's just so funny how like uh, I love it when just <laughs> these keyboard warriors always crack me up. Like uh, <laughs> like just the fact that like you know like here's the thing. We I understand Jerry West like you know did all that. Yeah, I, we know. Yeah, absolutely. We respect him, but he's still a little whiny, little punk. Like you know, like it just I, he's old, but you know I just I feel like you you, you have to you would. He's mad that he's not a part of the Lakers organization. That's why he's bitter. Like, let's that's yeah. let's call it the way how it is. And, and they had a fallen out, and I get it, completely get it. But no, just because you are who you are doesn't mean like I gotta treat you a certain. Like, I have to treat you with you know. I can't make fun of you. Get out of here. Jerry West's greatest accomplishment with the Lakers is not even one that he com he did on his own as a player. It was him drafting Kobe Bryant. So yeah. it was him literally taking a risk on a high schooler. With not a lot of, like, at that time, compared to, like, the prospects that goes into scouting today versus 20 years ago or even 25 years ago, like, to take a risk on a high school player back then was astronomical. And he was like, hey, like, yeah, we're going to throw Kobe Bryant to the mix. Obviously, it worked out better with Phil Jackson as head coach, and the rest was history. So Phil Jackson, or excuse me, Jerry West brought in Kobe Bryant. And I think a lot of people do pay tribute because if you remember when Kobe died, who were they interviewing the most? Probably Jerry West. And when yeah. does Jerry West ever do interviews around L.A.? Yeah. I, and, and I will say this, too. Like, the fact that Jerry West saw what he saw in Kobe, that alone, like, he, he could have done one thing for his, like, in a scouting career. And that's it. You bet a hunt. Like, you bet, like, you just... You're, you know, you're, that's, that's it. You, the fact that you spotted and you drafted and you got Kobe Bryant, like, I mean, it says a lot. I mean, obviously these days he's trying to help with the Clippers and eh, I guess on paper it's helping, but you know, uh, but the fact that he has that kind of like, you know, sight to, to see talent. It's, and here's the thing as the NBA ambassador for the Lakers, right? Like I'm supposed to be the person that's unbiased. It yeah. is working. Jerry West has an amazing career. I've said this before where Jerry West is the only player, or excuse me, he's the only person in the NBA that's had an all-around career as a coach, as a player, as a general manager. Nobody's done it better. I mean, Marcus Saul actually was the winning piece to that Paul Gasol trade. Paul brought a championship. But when have you ever seen Memphis actually have a winning career or like a winning record before Marcus Saul came? And then Golden State Warriors, you can have done it without Jerry West. And now the Clippers got their two biggest stars that they've ever had in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And despite them being out this season, the Clippers have a b above 500 record. So this is considered a successful season for the Clippers. Jerry West has done a lot of things. And I guess like you can say it's the competitive nature of him. It's very competitive for him to want to do well, which is why he's so miserable yeah. all the time. He's very competitive. Like I, you know, the portrayal that they've been showing on, uh, on the TV show, I understand. That's why I get it. That's why I get why he sounds bitter or he sounds jaded or offended or whatever you want to call it. Like, I get it. But, you know, hey, you're, you're working for the Clippers. F you. <laughs> yeah. And you want to, like, sorry. still keep your tickets? You can't eat your cake and have it too. Yeah, get out of here, guy. I even called him guy. <laughs> but Jerry West, okay, that, that's another funny thing is, like, uh, I didn't know he was the one that turned down the, tra or the drafting of Magic Johnson. So Jerry Buss still went with it. And the fact that they got that argument on the golf course was hilarious to me. I watched it like five times where it's just like, why don't you want to do like, what's your, what's your third reason? He was like, he's too nice. He smiles all the time. This is a man sport. It <laughs> 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 goes on to have a, a like very incoherent tirade of curse words and stuff. That guy who's playing Jerry West is hysterical and plays it to an excellent part. You know what's funny? That guy usually ruins movies uh, with him and uh, uh, Jock Courtney. They were in the both. The both of them were in the uh, a Terminator movie, like one of the worst ones. I think it was Genesis. Uh, great concept, but he played John Connor, and it's so weird that. He, so now when I see Jerry West, I'm going, ugh, the guy that played John Connor that ruined the series. Ugh. He's he's an Australian Jason, actor. He also played Jason one, Clark. Yes. Yeah, Jason Clark played one of the CIA agents in Zero Dark Thirty, and he's amazing in that role. Oh wow! So he comes from Everest, Terminators, uh, Pet Cemetery, Dawn yeah, of the Planet. Dawn of the Planet of Apes, uh, uh -huh. Lawless, and The Aftermath, and Zero Dark Thirty. And, but, I, 
I will say this: his portrayal of Jerry West, like it's, he should deserve something. Like he definitely, it's it's award winning. The fact that he's got his acts, like he's got his cadence down, his uh, mannerisms down. Like it, the guy's a great actor. I was like totally shocked that I was like, oh, the guy that ruined Ter- Terminator for me is a really good actor after all. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing, I like the fact that they're playing up to the fact that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a total a hole too, because that is true. So they're not hiding it. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that. Oh my! Did you notice? Uh, since we, yeah, since we're talking about the first episode, did you notice that uh, the, the, uh, Abrams and uh, and Zucker brothers were there? They made a cameo. Yeah, I did not yeah, on the wait. set of Airplane. I didn't realize either too that that it made it, it made it sound like that the woman from the actress I forget her name from Airplane her, she and Kareem were dating, and that's the reason that he got the part in the movie. Yeah, Whoa, that, I did, that blew over my head. That that was another part where it was just like because it made it seem like Kareem was trying to warm up to like be a more open as a person. That was the joke where the kid comes up and like Kareem, you are actually are one of my favorite players. Can I take a picture with you? He was like, "F off, kid!" Like that that right there. Like I picked up on that. Was a cameo in between the scenes where like they called cut and then like yeah. So that was where it was. But but the fact that they were in it, uh, I, I popped hard. I just as a comedy nerd, that's dude. Those are the one of some of the greatest. Greatest yeah. comedy writers of all time. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice homage. And I, I will say, because that scene, at first, I had to do a double take because I thought it was, like, where they put... It was one of those scenes where I thought they put the actor, kind of like what they do in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where yeah. they put the actor there, but it's a green screen to make it seem like they're actually a part of that vintage screen. So I thought the kid was literally the kid for Airplane for just a sec. That's funny. No, I I watched that movie nightly, and I already knew right, right off the gate. I was like, no, all white little kids look the same. So that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that way you were wrong. But I knew exactly who that kid was. I was like, that's not the like, I kid. bet that kid's from New York. Um, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. He talks crap about our pizza. But yeah, no, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, like, I like where that's going because, again, it's no mystery. Kareem is an actual a-hole. I still like him as a person because I know he does a lot for just a lot. He's an activist, and he cares about humans in general. So that's why I like and Kareem And he loves white chicks. And he loves white part. chicks. <laughs> Even though he, uh, the reason why he converted to Islam is for the brotherhood, what, right? Was that one of the reasons? Yeah, that's about right. That's like when, you know, a strong Hispanic woman is like, oh, you know, I, I need a strong Hispanic man, but they only date white guys. I get it. Yeah. yeah, it's, right. it's, yeah. Well, you know, like, she wants to get conquered, just like in the history books. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Zach. <laughs> what, was that too far? <laughs> no, I don't know. It, not enough. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about the Lakers here. Look, all I'm trying to say Kobe. is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has a lot in common with Larry Elder, and I think we could just... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> USA, USA, USA. I did that with my left hand too, if you noticed. All right. <laughs> um, That's your liberal left hand. <laughs> to wrap up this whole like uh, episode review, we That's have great. not seen Adrian Brody yet. He's going to come soon, and I'm excited to see what he looks like in that mustache. Full live well, action. How, hey, real quick, how about the guy that plays my uh, Magic Johnson? He's so good. Perfect. Perfect. I. I so Quincy Isaiah already is doing a wonderful job as Magnus Johnson. If it is true, again, because there's a lot of these things where I'm like, I'm not sure how much of this is true and how much it's not. But if it is true, the fact that Magic tried negotiating as a rookie, his rookie contract, and it was almost similar to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who won an NBA championship and had MV- MVP accolades to his resume. The fact that he was trying to negotiate his rookie contract is absurd. Is that funny? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Like, really? <laughs> You're going to try to strong arm a, a team? <laughs> I get it. I get why, but come on. Yeah, and that like that just goes to show a lot, of, again, if it's true, about Magic Johnson's character. To just have that type of confidence and to be like, look, I just won a national title game in front of Larry Bird on the national level. So you guys have, like, saying Larry Bird's going to go with the Boston Celtics. That's set and confirmed. I know where I'm going to end up, and I'm going to end up somewhere where they're going to pay me. That's a lot. I, I just love the fact that it they're, they're like really building and showing Magic. I mean, you know, with his family. I mean, I I never realized how close he was to his family and his dad. The guy that plays his dad is a dad great is actor. Awesome. Too. The dad is great. Dude, he is really great. How like strong are those performances? Very strong. 